Thomas Paine was perhaps the most radical signer of the United States Declaration of Independence, but he was also politically active in France and England. In the winter of 1775-76, Paine, while in France, wrote a pamphlet titled Agrarian Justice. It was published in 1797 in English and French. Paine argued that those who possess cultivated land owe the community a ground rent, which justifies an estate tax to fund universal old age and disability pensions, and also a fixed sum to be paid to all citizens on reaching maturity. In Paine's words, he proposed to create a national fund out of which there shall be paid to every person when arrived at the age of 21 years, the sum of 15 pounds sterling as a compensation in part for the loss of his or her natural inheritance by the introduction of a system of landed property. 165 days, years <laughs> later, Milton Friedman, a free market economist from the University of Chicago proposed in his 1962 book, Capitalism and Freedom, to abolish welfare programs and substitute them with a negative income tax, a close relative of UBI. Friedman argued that the negative income tax would help poor people by giving them money, which is what they need. This would be better than requiring them to come before a government official, detail all their assets and liabilities, and be told, you may spend X dollars on rent, Y dollars on food, etc., and then be given a handout. Friedman argued that the idea of a negative income tax is to treat people who are poor the same way as we treat people who are rich. Both groups would have to file income tax returns and both groups would be treated in a parallel way. Then in 1966, in a Senate hearing, Martin Luther King, the great civil rights advocate, testified on the moral need to abolish poverty. Keeping people in destitution, he said, was asocial, cruel, and blind as the practice of cannibalism. King then made a case for a solution. I am now convinced that the simplest approach will prove to be the most revolutionary, the guaranteed annual income. King's testimony was part of a growing general debate on poverty and how to deal with it in the context of President Lyndon Johnson's war on poverty announced in his first State of the Union address in January 1964. Johnson considered the depth of ex and extent of poverty in the country, nearly 20% of Americans at the time were poor, to be a national disgrace that merited a national response. In 1968, James Tobin, Paul Samuelson, John Kenneth Galbraith, and another 1,200 economists signed a document calling for the U.S. Congress to introduce a system of income guarantees and supplements. Then in August 1969, President Richard Nixon put forward his Family Assistance Plan, Assistance Plan or FAP, a guaranteed income proposal for the poor. The FAP aimed to implement a negative income tax for households with working parents. Like Friedman, Nixon intended for the FAP to place, replace existing welfare programs. Nixon saw this as a way to attract conservative voters who were beginning to become wary of welfare while maintaining his middle-class constituencies. The FAP specifically provided aid assistance to working class Americans with benefits varying based on age, the number of children, family income, and eligibility criteria. But even after many revisions and twice passing the House of Representatives, with attempts to appease conservatives under a family values guise, the FAP failed in the Senate in 1972. On October 5th of that year, a revised version of the last House version passed the Senate with a vote of 68 to 5, but it only authorized funding of FAP testing before its implementation. During the House-Senate reconciliation before Nixon signed the bill on October 15, 1972, the FAP was dropped despite the broad support it enjoyed from Americans across different regions. But the debate over the FAP did result in several extensive tests in several US cities 
and rural areas in the late 60s and 1970s. The first, the Garant New Jersey Graduated Work Incentive Experiment was conducted from 1968 to 72. The treatment group recipients received a guaranteed income for three years. The rural income maintenance experiment was conducted in rural parts of Iowa and North Carolina from 1970 to 72. The largest negative income tax experiment was in the Seattle Denver in the income maintenance experiment. It began in 1970 and was to be completed within six years, though it was extended until 1980 for one group of beneficiaries. Finally, the Gary income maintenance experiment was conducted between 1971 and 74. Subjects were mostly black single parent families living in Gary, Indiana. The experiment group received a guaranteed income for three years. Most of the researchers conducting these studies continued, considered the results extremely promising overall. Comparisons of the control and experimental group indicated that the negative income tax was capable of sufficiently reducing, significantly reducing material effects of poverty and the relative reductions in labor effort in occasion were probably acceptable. What did evolve from the debates in the 1960s and early 70s was the Earned Income Tax Credit or EITC, first enacted in 1975 at the federal level. Substantial expansions were adopted in 1986, 1990 and 1993. The credit goes only to households with earnings with the size of credit initially rising as earnings increase. EITC benefits both offset taxes and frequently provide a wage supplement. Many states have also enacted their own versions. In 2021, the earned income credit ranges from $1,502 to $6,728, depending on tax filing status, income, and number of children. People without children can also qualify. Uh, Alaska is the only state currently having a UBI paid as a dividend from the Alaska Permanent Fund, a constitutionally established fund managed by a state-owned corporation, the Alaska Permanent Fund Corporation. The Alaska Permanent Fund was established in 1976 under a Republican governor and designed to invest at least 25% of oil revenues in a diversified portfolio for the benefit of future generations who would no longer have oil as a resource. The Permanent Fund Dividend, or PFD, is an annual dividend paid to Alaska residents that have lived within the state for a full calendar year. The PFD has been paid since 1982 and has varied between a high of $2,631 in the year 2000 and a low of $530 in 1984, all measured in $2,020. Its value in 2020 was $992, or almost $4,000 for a family of four. The U.S. Basic Income Guarantee, or U.S. Big, is an informal network of mostly academic UABI advocates established in December 1999. The goal of U.S. Big is to increase the discussion of basic income in the United States. Its activities include annual conferences, a monthly news flash, a blog series, and a discussion paper series. But it was Andrew Yang's campaign for president uh, that launched a renewed interest in UBI in the United States. In two, November 2017, Yang filed his papers to be a candidate in the Democratic primary elections. He publicly launched his candidacy in February 2018. In April that year, he published his second book, The War on Normal People, The Truth About America's Disappearing Jobs and Why Universal Basic Income is Our Future, setting forth his arguments for a $1,000 a month UBI that he called a freedom dividend, freedom dividend, dividend and many of his other policy proposals. Yang qualified for and participated in all six nationally televised democratic primary debates held in 2019. In 2020, Yang did not meet the polling requirement for the seventh debate, but he later qualified for and participated in the eighth debate. Yang 
suspended his candidacy in February 11, on February 11, 2020, the night of the New Hampshire primary, when he decided he no longer had a viable candidacy. Yank's campaign focused on the displacement of American workers through automation and, and artificial intelligence, a problem Yang stated was a major reason Donald Trump won the 2016 presidential election. Yang was extremely successful in mobilizing an enthusiastic legion of supporters known as the Yang Gang. I consider myself a member of the Yang Gang. Here's my math hat, make America think harder. Many members of the Yang Gang continued to be active in the US UBI movement support movements, most prominently in Humanity First, Humanity Forward, and the Income Movement. The Income Movement is an umbrella organization supporting grassroots organizing and other movements with the objective of establishing a federal UBI by 2030. The Basic Income March, of which this is a virtual version, was originated by the Income Movement. Mayors for a Guaranteed Income was founded by then mayor of Stockton, California, Michael Stubbs. As of September 2021, 25 cities and towns in the United States are planning or already carrying out guaranteed income pilot programs. And the number is expected to continue increasing in the context of the 100 Mayors for Guaranteed Income campaign being conducted by Mayors for Guaranteed Income and the Income Movement. Another 32 cities and towns have mayors who have joined Mayors for Guaranteed Income, but do not yet have plans for a pilot. But there are also some important state level initiatives underway, further reinforcing the growing movement toward establishing a federal basic income policy. In addition to Yang's campaign, the COVID-19 pandemic has resulted in a tremendous improvement in the status of UBI. It has resulted in cash payments to most Americans by both the Trump and Biden administrations, greatly increasing the support for UBI. The latest and most extensive step is the Biden administration's American Rescue Plan that increased the federal child tax credit from $2,000 per child to $3,000 per child for children over the age of six and from $2,000 uh, to $3,600 for children under the age of six, and it raised the age limit from 16 to 17. All working families get the full tax credit when they make up to $150,000 a year for a couple or $112,500 for a family with a single parent. As of July 15th, most families are automatically receiving monthly payments of $250 or $300 per child without having to take any action. House Democrats proposed extending the expanded child tax credit through 2,225, 2025. And 450 economists have written an open letter calling on Congress to make 2021 expansion of the child tax credit permanent, a position also taken by the income movement and several other UBI supporting organizations. So at this moment in time, uh, with the income march taking place on today, we are in a position of much improved support for UBI in the United States. Thank you very much.